Uh, Brandon, these last two years for you have been uh, quite a whirlwind. You went from a knockout loss against Timothy Bradley, then you announced the, your retirement, had uh, some issues with your former promotional company, and took a 19 month layoff. After that layoff, you came back with a new trainer, and then you came back with a win against Aaron Herrera via knockout. How would you describe these last two years for you? Well, uh, it's part of boxing sometimes. You know, you, you do a roller coaster, you ride the waves before you get a straight line. Uh, is boxing's been boxing, you know, boxing's still the same, you know, it's, it's just the fact that when I, first of all about the promotion country, yeah, you know, all that happened, but even Dean, I'm very grateful to Top Rank for giving me the opportunity and all these years that I've been with them for, uh, made me successful and gave me the fights that I wanted, and it was just time to move on, you know what I mean? So you're back home, you know, your second home, originally where you were also where your career took off. You're, you're back in the camp with Garcia, like you mentioned. But what I want to do, I want to go back to your 19th month layoff real quick. What were those 19 months like for you? How, what did you do? Because 19 months is a long time for anybody to be out of work. Yeah, so, honestly, when I, when I, at first I was done with boxing. I retired, when I said I was done, I was done. I was literally done with boxing. I didn't want to do it. I wasn't in my heart no more. No, it wasn't in my heart. It just, I didn't want to do it no more at that point. And then for some reason, I, I was watching a fight with my wife at the house. I forgot what fight it was. I was watching a fight and I was fucking, I got that urge again. I was like, I told my I go, I go, babe, that could still be me. I could still do that shit. I just had a bad training camp. I had a bad, you know, the weight loss. I wasn't disciplined, but that could still be me. I can be me like 100%. And she goes, you know what? Whatever you feel like doing, I'm gonna leave it up to you. If you feel like coming back, make a comeback, but you make a comeback, go ahead. But if you're gonna come back, you gotta do it right. You can't half pass like you've been doing in the past. You gotta do it right. And so, you know, I just thought about it, I thought about it, I thought about it. that's how I made my comeback. And yeah. then that's when Ricky Foodness came along. Now, with, with you know, half assing it and you say you, you got tired of boxing, you lost the love for it, what happened? Why? What, what was it about it? Were you, was it just because you're, you're so tired of that routine that you've been doing since you were an amateur? What was it about boxing that you were just tired of being around it? Mm, I was in the wrong place. Uh, you, my, I wasn't there. You know what I mean? I, I got like to a point where I'm, I thought my shit didn't stink. You know what I mean? I got too comfortable. Uh, I, I just lost it. You know what I mean? I, I lost the drove, the drive for it. So this this 19 month laid off helped me out so much that it rejuvenated me to get back to the, the love for it and the. The thing that I wanted success in boxing that I always wanted to do when I was a little kid, and it helped out a lot. It helped out me a lot, and you know, I'm I'm good on weight. I've been training hard, and we're right here again, me and Donald, and we're doing it all over again. Was it the big paydays? Was it the becoming a world champion? Was it you forgetting the whole reason why you started boxing in the first place? Is that why? It was just, it was a little bit of everything, a little, a little bit of everything that was just messing with me, and that's what happened. So. Uh, like I said, now I learn. Uh, I'm glad I learned right now at this age. Because if it, if I would try to learn, like if I didn't do it until I like 36 years old and try to come back, there was no point because I'd be too late. I'd be too old already. My body would not probably react the same. So uh, I'm glad I learned it. I seen it now than back then. What was it like day to day during those 19 months off? I mean, what? How do you? Keep yourself from going crazy, cause I was going crazy. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. You know, <laughs> no, it was, at first it was cool, cause like I said, I, I got to spend so much quality time with my kids, uh, my wife. You know, we spent so much quality time. We did some things together. We did, you know, we did things that we had to do, like uh, a couple did. Uh, I wasn't doing that because, uh, like I said, I was always caught up on everything else, all the drama and all that stuff. But since now, I realize it. You know, I take a step back, and you know. Family comes first, like always. And so now it's that now. You, you, you take the 19 months off, you come back with the knockout win against Herrera. The, the fight took place in Lancaster, California. Right. You're somebody who has had main events in Vegas, in Macau, China. You have fought all over the world. What was it like going from the bright lights of Vegas to fighting in Lancaster, which is not exactly the most desirable place? Honestly, I really like the Lancaster deal. I like it better than the other fight. I'm telling you, I'm a type of guy that it could be in a backyard, literally, or in the gym, when nobody's there, just the judges and 
that's it. And the fighter me, and that's how we can fight. I'm, I'm that type of guy. I, I'm not really, see, that's why I messed up too, because I was too busy worrying about the fame. And that was never been me, and I just got caught up in my own mess. I got caught up in all that drama, I got caught up in all that shit. So now, you know, I'm, it don't really matter to me where I'm at. And fighting Lancaster was fighting like in Vegas. You know, as long as there's a person, there's people and whatever, as long as I get a fight, I get a fight. Now moving forward, you have your next fight coming up against Danny Garcia. He's coming off a, lot, a loss to Keith Thurman, you're coming off a win. How is camp been going for you so far and what exactly are you expecting from Danny Garcia that night? Well, camp's been going very well, you know, we've been training really hard. And I like to thank my boys, uh, my boy right here, Adrian uh, Casas, for letting me use the gym. Uh, he's been tremendous with us, terrific, and I, I like that, I respect that. But camp been going very well. Uh, we train really hard, and uh, we're just ready to get back to the top, you know what I mean? Uh, as you can see, there's not that much distraction around like there was before. There's like literally no distraction. All you see in the gym is just me, me, Cobra, Donald, and, and my boy Adrian, that's it. That's all you see right here all the time. Danny Garcia, he's someone who, who he, want, he says he wants to make it a slugfest. It seems like he's gonna be in there, he's gonna dance, he's gonna try to box you. He's gonna see you as a stationary target, which you've been known to do. You've been, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll take a punch, you'll laugh at your opponent, you'll keep coming forward. That's what he, it seems like he's expecting. What did you have to do to make sure that? Hey, you know what? At the end of the day, I'm not really worrying too much. Whatever anybody thinks or whatever everybody has their opinion, because that's that's their opinion. Everybody's tied to their own opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, all I know is that we're ready for whatever. Uh, Donald's been doing an excellent job, I could say, in this camp, and like I feel young, and he's been doing a tremendous job, and so we're just ready for whatever and whatever he brings. I want the best Danny Garcia to come out, and they're gonna see the best Brandon Reels coming out again, and I feel rejuvenated, and I feel, I feel healthy, and I feel ready and prepared for this fight, so. Are you waking up excited to get back to the gym again like you were when you were younger? Are you happy to be back? in boxing, like do you have that love for boxing? All right, the, the boxing never, the, the love for boxing never went away. You know, I always had that love. It never went away. It was just, uh, like I told you, I got caught up. I got caught up in my own mess. It was my fault. But uh, I, I love boxing for 100%. It never went away. This is, this is my job, this is what I love to do. It's not just a job, this is my passion. This is what I love to do. Brandon, you are a true boxing fan's favorite. Everyone has always enjoyed the fights you, you have put on, win or lose. We knew, we knew you, we were gonna get a good show out of you. We know that you, you love to put on a show for the fans. And we are all looking forward to seeing you against Danny Garcia. Uh, you know, I always, I always uh, appreciate my fans, you know what I mean? Because uh, I, always, I always fight for them and I love, I love to put on an entertaining show for them because they work hard to buy the tickets and to see boring fights. And not only see boring fights, but see fighters just dance around, look at each other and do it for the money. Nah, it's not, that's not who I am. I'm a throwback fighter. I come to fight and that's, I'm back in the old days. Just come to fight and get paid and go have fun and do what we gotta do best and then wait for the next one. You got to do something that you know many people who grow up saying they want to do. Not, not everybody in this world gets to do that. You have done that to a, a very high level. And we're looking forward to seeing it. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. All right. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah.